Hey everyone, this is Matthew from anotherworldterraria.com. Just going to show you guys today how to convert an Exoterra Nano into a uh, terrarium that's able to grow tropical plants. The reason why you need to convert these is because if you look at the lid here, it has a screen mesh. And so when you're growing tropical plants, uh, this would be too much ventilation and the plants dry out and there's not enough humidity. So you need to actually remove the screen and put in a glass panel. So I'm going to show you guys how to do that. Okay, what you're going to need to do this project is you're going to need a sturdy, sharp and strong, good quality um, pocket knife of some sort or some kind of knife that is sharp and thin so that you can work it in between the frame and the gasket. Then you're going to need some kind of uh, needle nose pliers of some sort. I really like these angled ones because it's easy to get in that frame uh, and underneath the gasket. Then you're going to need some protective work gloves and some safety goggles. First thing you'll need to do is you'll need to unlock the lid by slide, by rotating these little latches and then you can just lift the uh, the lid out and then you'll want to just set the tank itself aside so if you take a look at the frame of the lid this is the inside I, I flipped it over so this is the side that faces into the tank is there's a little black uh, gasket that they have in here that they actually force in there and it basically jams the screen mesh in there uh, and the gasket itself has some adhesive underneath so sometimes it can be really difficult to extract that um, you want to be really careful while you're doing this because if you are forcing too hard and things you can actually break this frame so you want to be really careful so basically you're going to want to grab the gasket that they have forced in here and you're going to want to somehow pull that out uh, it can be really difficult sometimes because it is kind of glued in there and sometimes the gasket itself will actually rip uh, as you're pulling it and it'll just like break apart so one thing that you can do is if you find that there's it's hard to grab um, any of it you can take a knife and you can actually run it in between the gasket and the mesh and the frame again be careful not to push too hard because you can crack the frame itself so you just want to kind of run it along there a couple times and it will gradually begin to separate the gasket from part of the frame you can do both sides too and then it helps you be able to grab that gasket and pull it out the end is starting to come loose you have to sometimes put the twist the pliers and get underneath it so you can get more of it to grab and then you want to kind of wiggle it as you pull it so you can see I've got the end of it it might be hard to see but I've got the end of the uh, gasket and it's starting to come loose so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna wiggle that and I'm gonna keep grabbing it further towards the bottom as I pull it out so that I make sure that it doesn't rip off and you just keep working your way as you pull it out a little bit and then you grab it towards the base again and then keep wiggling it and if it starts to not want to come out you can always you know grab the knife again and you can cut in between and just keep working it sometimes it'll just come loose really easily so when that happens you can just pull it and then when it catches again you can just keep doing that so the process continues all right so as you can see I finally got the gasket out and you can just get rid of that and then you have the frame with the screen mesh and then what you can do is you can just literally pop the mesh out making sure you have the gloves because it's really sharp on the edges the wire and sometimes there's a little bit of adhesive in there so just be careful not to yank too hard because you don't want to break the frame so like right now it's catching there I'll just try and loosen up whatever I can and then we'll get that so I'll grab the knife 
and work it a little bit and try and loosen up the where it's catching the uh, wire and the in the adhesive and try and loosen it all right so there we go just shake out the extra um, any remaining adhesive or gaskets pieces or uh, wire and then we'll just clean up this area get rid of this and then we'll continue for materials for this project you're going to need some paper towels isopropyl alcohol which I just keep in a little spray bottle because I find it easier to work with that way you're also going to need some clear silicone and I get this Loctite clear silicone it's a hundred percent silicone and so it doesn't have any kind of antifungal uh, chemicals or anything which can be harmful to plants and animals and uh, this actually is aquarium safe if you read the label and then you're going to need your glass panel and I also get this at Lowe's uh, this is the 332nd inch thick glass that Lowe's sells. It's really cheap uh, for the sheet that you need. It's uh, around where I live. It's about six or seven bucks for that sheet, and I just have them cut it for me. Uh, the approximate size that you want to have them cut it to is six and five eighths inch by six and one eighth inch. So again, that's six and five eighths inch by six and one eighth inch of the 332nd inch thick glass. Uh, you can just have them cut that. It doesn't have to be perfect. As you can see, it's a little rough around the edges, but uh, that's not a problem. All right, so now we're ready to assemble the glass panel and the frame of the lid. And what you should do after you get the glass panel cut is you should test fit, you know, just dry fit it in there and make sure that it fits within the frame and you want to make sure it fits within the there's a couple different ridges right here and you want it to be within the inner one so it lays flat across the innermost rim next thing that is uh, optional but I would highly recommend is that you wash the glass I just use a little bit of, a couple drops of dish soap and just rinse it uh, with you know a sponge or paper towel and then I rinse it off really good and then just dry it so then it's clean and you're not gonna have you know that dirt and stuff inside of there inside of the tank and also it's gonna make it easier for the silicone to adhere to the glass and that's why we go even the next step and we take the isopropyl alcohol and you're just gonna wanna spray the glass panel on the side that you're going to adhere the silicone to and you're just gonna wipe that with a nice clean paper towel and make sure that you get any oils from your fingers or any other contaminants off of the glass and then remember that the side that you cleaned that's the side that you're gonna flip over and put onto the silicone then you're going to take your silicone sealant and what you're going to do is you're going to put it again there's an innermost rim here that goes all the way around you're going to want to put a bead of silicone all the way along that and you're going to want it to be sitting directly on the center of that piece of plastic so that the silicone is essentially going to create a seal on that on that little ledge there I like to work with nitrile gloves on when I'm doing chemicals and silicone and stuff like that so I switch to those and I also like to have some paper towels nearby to wipe up any excess silicone that gets on uh, anything that I'm working with and so we're just going to go ahead and apply the bead of silicone now just going to go around the edge here you don't have to put a lot you just want enough that it's going to create a seal to not only adhere the glass to the actual frame but also to you know keep the, the humidity up in the tank for your plants and so forth 
So I'm just making sure that I get a solid bead as best I can. It doesn't have to be perfect either because you aren't going to really see it. You just want it to do the job. All right, so I've got that on. And then I have the side that I wiped with isopropyl alcohol. I'm gonna flip it over so that side's down. And I'm gonna make sure that I have this uh, correctly oriented so that it's not, you know, make sure it's the way that it fits in. So you'll just wanna lean one side in and then just drop it on. And then you'll just press that down firmly but not super hard. If you squeeze too hard, then it actually forces all the silicone away and then it doesn't seal as good. I'm just gonna put that there and what I like to do is I like to put something underneath the frame like so so that the air can get under there and then the silicone will cure uh, will cure faster so you're just gonna want to leave that for 24 hours at least and then it should be fully cured all right so through the magic of the internet, 24 hours has passed in a matter of seconds and this silicone has already cured. There is no more chemical smell and as you can see, we've got our bead and it has cured around there and the glass panel is in. So there's actually another step that I would recommend and that is that we're going to do another round of silicone on the inside of this because we did it on that side of the glass that's facing down and is inside of the frame but we also want to seal it on the inside of the tank lid here because number one it's going to create a better seal and it's going to reduce any moisture from going in the channel underneath this glass and number two it's going to hold the glass in a little bit more securely so we're going to go ahead and put another round of silicone on there and we are going to wipe the glass with a little bit of isopropyl alcohol just to make sure that it's clean just like we did on the first round of silicone so I'm just gonna spray it on this paper towel and then I'm just gonna wipe it down really quick around the edge where I'm gonna put the silicone and then I'll just use the dry part of the paper towel to help dry it a little bit faster. You can put a decent amount of silicone on the inside here because you want to really fill in the gap between the glass and the frame channel. And there is a little there's a little sort of gate here that slides back and forth and it allows you to put um, like a temperature probe and things like that through here and I also use it for fans so you just want to make sure that you wipe the excess silicone off of there and don't actually block that you know or like lock it together so it's not the most beautiful job in the world but it will do the trick so I have the uh, silicone smoothed in there into all the gaps and you know holding the glass panel in there and it's going to create a better seal so again we'll let that sit for 24 hours and then the lid will be complete okay it's been 24 hours and the silicone has cured so we now have a sealed glass panel and we can go ahead and put this on the tank and take a look okay so all we need to do is pop this baby in there and then you can just rotate these little clips and it locks the lid in there so we now have a glass lid instead of a wire mesh lid uh, and so that's going to allow the tank to stay humid and uh, a lot more moisture and it's going to be better for tropical plants orchids ferns moss what have you uh, so you can go ahead and make your terrarium and uh, you're good to go. So there's a couple more things I actually want to show you that's not part of the tank conversion, but it's kind of related to making a tank out of a nano. So let's get into that really quick. Okay, first thing I want to show you is this is the nano hood that Exoterra makes that fits their nano tanks. And I always use LED light bulbs and 
This one is a value grow LED bulb from NE Herp, uh, which is actually New England Herpeticulture. NE Herp is their, you know, kind of nickname. Anyway, this uh, type of bulb, these LED type of bulbs, they get really hot. And so what you want to do when you use those is you want to remove this reflector that comes inside of this hood. So I've already removed it, obviously, um, but it's really easy. You just unscrew four screws. You can see the holes right here. Uh, so you just remove the screws, pop that out, and then you just put your bulb in. And that's going to let it ventilate through the top vent on the hood uh, so the bulb can cool. And it's also going to remove the heat being reflected back from this. And additionally, the light bulb, because it's a flat bar, the light will spray downward anyway. So there is no light going upwards that you need the reflector at all anyway. So. Uh, just remove that reflector whenever you're using an LED bulb like this. So that's the first thing I want to show you. The next thing that I want to show you is the air circulation fan. So you may or may not need a fan in your nano tank. It kind of depends on how much moisture is in there and what you're growing and the temperature and all these different things that can lead to mold growth or other potential problems. Uh, and additionally, when you have a nano tank, it's so small that putting a fan in there, you know, it takes up space and you need space around it for the air to flow. And it's kind of hard to find a place to mount it, so you have to create some kind of mount. Um, and it also looks ugly, so there's a lot of factors, but I just want to point out that you may need a fan. And what I've, I've wired up this fan here to a Zalman FanMate controller. So this controller allows me to adjust the speed of the fan, which then affects the amount of cubic feet per minute that the fan blows around. So you want to, you know, you can adjust that and tweak it depending on the plants and different things that you've got going on. So I'm going to plug this in really quick and show you the fan. All right, so here we go. There's the fan, and I've got the controller here, and I can adjust the speed of the fan up and down. Anyway, I just wanted to show you the air circulation. I'll have a, eventually I'll have a video that's actually a tutorial of how to wire these fans. There are certain safety, uh, you know, factors that you need to know about like amperage and wattage and uh, the power supply and things like that because if you wire the wrong stuff together you can actually start a fire. So I'll have a tutorial on that at some point and then you guys will be able to do this yourself. Okay, so I'm going to be using this Nano for a uh, quarantine tank for some new plants. I'm going to really quickly put the fan in here. So, like I said, there's different ways you can mount them and do things, but just for the purposes of doing this quickly and illustration, I'm just going to uh, basically hang the fan in here by the, you know, by the wires. And so, as you can see on this Nano tank, there's these little notches right here, and those are holes where you can fit through wires for different things. So I use it for the fan. So I'm just going to take this lid and pop it back in. And then there's a little gate here and you can slide this over and it'll sort of fill the gap. So I always put the fan wires on the furthest over to the side. That way I can slide the gate over and cover all the other holes and then the humidity stays up there and I can pull it back and open up those holes for a little bit of ventilation if I so uh, desire. So there's that. Alright, so I'm just going to flip these and make sure I lock the lid in and those have to be in to put the hood on too. So, and then there's little um, kind of little feet right in here and you just put those on the inside of the tank rim or the you know the lid rim and it fits right in and I'll flip it on there we go so we've got the light got the nano tank going I'm gonna pop some plants in so you guys can take a look alright there you have it guys that's how you convert an exoterra nano from a wire mesh lid to a glass lid thereby keeping the humidity in so you can create a terrarium or vivarium for your tropical plants, orchids, ferns, moss, or whatever you desire. If you have any questions, go ahead and post them down in the comments or on my blog. Let me know what you guys think. 
Thanks a lot for watching, and I'll check you later.